All right, uh, this is the review for 3435. So 34 is about dividing polynomials. So the first thing up is long division. So long division. Uh, we're going to take our denominator, so 2x plus 3. And we're going to divide it into our numerator, 2x to the third plus 7x squared minus 4x minus 15. Okay, so we need to see um, how many times 2x goes into 2x to the third. It goes in x squared times. Okay, another way to think of this is just 2x times what gives me x squared. Or you could do 2x to the third divided by 2x, right? And you get x squared. So um, a lot of different ways to figure this out. I just think of it as what times 2x will give me 2x to the third. It's going to be x squared. Okay, so x squared times 2x is going to be 2x to the third. x squared times 3 is 3x squared. Um, we're subtracting in long division, right? So we need to switch the signs so the positives become negatives because we're subtracting. So that cancels, right? And we're left with 4x squared. And then we're going to bring down the minus 4x and the minus 15. And now we need to see how many times 2x is going to go into 4x squared. So 2 times what will give me 4? That's going to be 2. And then x times x will give me x squared, so that's going to be 2x. So I'm going to do plus 2x. 2x times 2x gives me 4x squared. 2x times 3 gives me 6x. We're subtracting, so we need to change the sign. So these are going to become minuses. So our x squareds cancel. We get negative 10x minus 15. 2x times what will give me negative 10x. So again, if you can't figure this out, you could always do negative 10x divided by 2x, which is negative 5. And that's fine. So it's going to be negative 5 or minus 5. And negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. We're subtracting, so we need to switch the signs. Distribute the negative. And our remainder here is going to be 0, which means our answer is going to be x squared plus 2x minus 5. All right, the next one, um, the one issue is we're missing x squared, right? So 4x to the 4th plus 3x squared. We should really add in that 0x, I'm sorry, uh, 3x to the 3rd. We should really write in that 0x squared plus 2x plus 1, right? It just doesn't show up because it's 0 times x squared is 0. But this is really what we're trying to do. Okay. So I'm going to put x squared plus x plus 2 out here. That's my denominator. I'm going to divide it into my numerator, which is 4x to the 4th plus 3x to the 3rd plus 0x squared, plus 2x, plus 1. All right, so this is going to be 4x squared. 4x squared times x squared is 4x to the 4th. 4x squared times x is 4x to the 3rd. And 4x squared times 2 is 8x squared. We're going to switch the signs, so these are going to become minus, minus, and minus. Cancels out. We get negative x to the third minus 8x squared plus 2x plus 1. All right, next, um, x squared times negative x is going to give us negative x to the third, right? Negative x times x squared is going to be negative x to the third. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times 2 is negative 2x. I'm going to switch the signs, so these are going to become pluses. Cancels. I get negative 7x squared plus 4x plus 1. 
x squared times negative 7 is going to give me negative 7x squared. So I'm going to put minus 7 up here. So negative 7x squared. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14. We're subtracting, so we got to switch the signs. This cancels. We get 11x plus 15. And that's going to be my remainder. So I'm going to do plus 11x plus 15 all over x squared plus x plus 2. And there's my answer. All right. Um, let's look at synthetic division. So synthetic division is much quicker. It only works if it's x minus a or x plus a. Um, if you have a 2 out here, it's not going to work. If you have an x squared, it's not going to work. So just if it's x minus a or x plus a. Okay. Um, so synthetic division, uh, this factor is x minus 5. That means the 0 would be x equals positive 5, right? If you add 5 to both sides, your 0 is going to be 5. So I'm going to put a 5 out front. Okay, I'm going to put 4. There's 0x squared here, so I'm going to put the 0 for 0x zero squared, and then minus 102, and then 10. I'm adding the 0 because of 0x squared. All right, uh, bring down the 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 0 plus 20 is 20. 5 times 20 is 100. That's negative 2. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, which means our remainder is 0. So our solution here is going to be 4x squared plus 20x minus 2. Okay, on the next one, um, our factor is x plus 1, so our solution is negative 1. Our 0 is negative 1. Okay, uh, x to the third, that's going to be 4, and then 9, and then 7, and then 8, right? We want our exponents in descending order. So 4x to the third plus 9x squared minus 7x plus 8 over x plus 1. Okay, and then doing synthetic division, we can drop down the 4. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Um, that's going to be 5. 5 times 1, that's negative 5. Gives me negative 12, 12, and then 20. Okay, so my solution here is going to be 4x squared plus 5x minus 12. And then plus my remainder, which is 20, over x plus 1, right? This is my remainder. All right, 5 and 6. Uh, to check and see if it's a factor, we have to see if the remainder is 0 when we divide. So we're going to use synthetic division for these. So um, I'm going to use negative 2. And then we have a 1, a 1, a negative 3, a negative 3, a negative 4, and a negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to drop down the 1. That's going to be negative 2. It's going to be positive 2. Positive 2, positive 2, positive 4, which gives me a remainder of 0. So we're going to say yes. It's a factor of this polynomial. x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial because when we divide it, we get a remainder of 0. Okay, the one below, we're going to take a half. Uh, 2, 5, 8 negative 1, bring down the 2, half of 2, half times 2 is going to be 1, we get 6, 5 plus 1 is 6, half of 6 is 3, that's going to be 11, uh, half of 11 is 5 over 2, I'm sorry, this is negative 8, right, let me go back a minute, this should be negative 8, so this is going to be negative 5, half of negative 5 is negative 5 over 2, this will get us negative 7 over 2 when we add them. 
the remainder is not zero, so we're going to say no. X minus one half is not a factor of this polynomial because you do not get a remainder of zero. So that's three, four. Um, long division, synthetic division, and finding if it is a factor or not. Okay, three, five, the next part here, sketch the graph of the function by finding the zeros. Uh, which interval is the function positive? Which interval is the function negative? So the first thing we need to do are find the zeros, which means we need to factor. So it looks like uh, we can pull out an X and that would leave us with X squared plus six X plus nine. We can use our X method now. We need two numbers that multiply to nine and add to six. That's going to be three and three. So we get X plus three, X plus three. Okay, so we can tell here our zeros are gonna be um, X equals zero, and then X plus three equals zero. So we're gonna get X equals negative three. So we get X equals zero, and X equals negative, right? You subtract three on both sides, you get X equals negative three. Okay, so if we were to graph this, Okay, we have a zero at zero here. And then we have one at negative three. Okay, and we need to look at our intervals. So we have three different intervals here. We have from negative infinity until negative three. Right, that's this part right here. Then we have from negative three to zero, which is this part right here. And then we have from zero to infinity which is this part over here. All right, um, our factors were x, x plus three, and x plus three. Okay, we're gonna pick a number on each interval. So I'm gonna pick negative four, and I'm gonna plug in negative four here. So if I substitute in negative four to each of these, right, I'm gonna get a negative, a negative one and a negative one. A negative times a negative times a negative is going to be a negative, which means on this interval, the graph's going to be down here. Okay, the next one, I'm going to plug in a negative one. So let's say um, I do negative one. That would be a negative one is a negative. Negative one plus three, positive. Negative one plus three is also positive two. A negative times a positive times a positive is gonna give me a negative. Okay, and then I need to pick one from the last interval. So zero to infinity, maybe I pick one. So one is positive. One plus three, positive. One plus three, positive. A positive times a positive times a positive is gonna be a positive number. All right. So um, from negative infinity to negative three, this graph is negative. From negative three to zero, it's also negative. So it's going to do a bounce here, right? And it's going to look something like this. Right? And then from zero to infinity, it's going to be positive. All right. So there's our graph for the first one. Okay, negative, negative, positive, right? It's below, it's below, it's above. Negative, negative, positive. All right, the next one, um, we can factor out a 2x. So g of x equals 2x. You're left with x squared um, minus 10x plus 25. We can factor that, right? You look for two numbers, multiply to 25, add to negative 10. That's going to be negative 5 and negative 5. So we get 2x, and then it's going to be x minus 5, x minus 5. Okay, so you have two zeros here. You do 2x equals 0, divide by 2, you get x equals 0. Okay, we got x minus 5 equals 0. You add five to both sides, we get x equals 
five. Okay, so there's my two zeros. So my intervals, so if I try to graph this, and I have a zero here at zero, and I'm at a zero over here at five. All right, so my intervals are gonna be from negative infinity until zero, from zero until five, and then from five until infinity. Okay, my factors are 2x, x minus 5, x minus 5. Okay, I plug in a negative number, say negative 1, that's going to be negative, negative 6, negative 6, negative times negative times negative, negative. I plug in a number between 0 and 5, let's say 1, positive 1. 1 times 2 is 2, that's positive. 1 minus 4, negative. 1 minus 4, negative. So a positive times a negative is a negative, and a negative times a negative is going to give me a positive. Plug in a 6, right? Between 5 and infinity, a 6. That's going to be positive, positive, positive. Okay, which means this graph is going to be negative. Right? From negative infinity to 0, it's negative. And then from 0 to 5, it's going to be positive. But then at 5 to infinity, it's also going to be positive, which means we're going to bounce and go up. Negative, positive, positive. Excuse me. Okay, the next one, uh, we have the difference of two squares. So h of x. x to the fourth is a perfect square, and 256 is a perfect square. So we're going to get x squared minus 16, and then x squared plus 16. Okay, x squared minus 16 is also a perfect square. So that's going to be x minus 4, and then x plus 4. Okay, then you have x squared plus 16. Okay, we're going to solve for the zero. So you have x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0, and then x squared plus 16 equals 0. So we get x equals 4, x equals negative 4. Okay, and then x squared plus 16, if we subtract 16 from both sides, we're going to get x squared equals negative 16. And if we take the square root of both sides, you're going to get x equals plus or minus 4i. Since 4i does not appeal, appear on our xy plane, our Cartesian plane, um, we're not going to worry about it. Okay, it's going to intersect the x-axis in the complex plane at 4i and negative 4i, but we're not going to worry about the complex plane. So when we sketch this graph, we're going to worry about negative 4 and positive 4. All right, so we have negative infinity to negative 4. We have negative 4 to 4. And we have 4 to infinity. Okay. Uh, our factors are x minus 4, x plus 4. And then x squared plus 16. These are always going to be positive, but that's right. Pick a number between negative infinity and negative 4, negative 5. That's going to be negative, negative, positive. x squared, right? Negative 5 squared is positive 25, right? Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 plus 16 is 41. So overall, that's going to be positive. Um, zero, negative four and four. I'm going to plug in zero. That's going to be negative, positive, positive, which gives me negative. And then five, let's say five, right? Between four and infinity, five, that's going to be positive, positive, positive. Okay. So my graph is going to be positive from negative. It's going to be positive up here. It's going to be negative. And then it's going to be positive, right? It's going to be positive from negative infinity to negative four going to go negative from negative 4 to 4, and then positive again from 4 to infinity. All right, the last one on the front here. So again, difference of two squares. This is going to be x squared minus 25, and then x squared plus 25. Okay, so then you get x minus 5, x plus 5, x squared plus 25. h of x, 
h of x. Okay, so then I'm going to get x equals 5, x equals negative 5, and then it's going to be x equals plus or minus 5i, which I'm not going to worry about. It's just going to be these two. Okay, so we got negative infinity to negative 5, negative 5 to 5, and then 5 to infinity, right, if we try to sketch it. So negative 5 and 5. Factors. The factors here are going to be x minus 5, x plus 5, x squared plus 25. Okay. Negative 6, that's going to be negative, negative, positive. Right now, anything squared is going to be positive. So these are all going to be positive because when you square a number, it's going to be positive. And then you add 25 to it, it's going to be even more positive. All right. Uh, zero, that's going to be negative and positive. And then maybe a six is going to give us positive, positive, positive. So we're going to have positive, negative, positive. So again, it's going to look like the last one. It's going to look like this. Okay, you got positive from negative infinity to negative 5, negative from negative 5 to 5, and then from 5 to infinity, it's positive. All right, um, next section here. So section 3, um, find the zeros and end behavior. Okay, so um, our zeros are going to be x equals 0, right? x equals 2, and then x equals negative 2. Right, our end behavior, so as x goes to infinity uh, and x goes to negative infinity, what's going to happen to the y's? Okay, so this is um, first degree. This would be x squared and then x squared. So if I multiply all these together, I'm going to have a fifth degree polynomial. Okay, and my leading coefficient is going to be negative 1. So it's negative and degree is odd, right? So it's going to look something like this, right? So as I go to the right, I'm going down towards negative infinity. So as I go towards infinity to the right, I go down towards negative infinity. As I go infinity to the left, right, to negative infinity on the x-axis, I'm going to go up to positive infinity. So my end behavior is going to look like this. Okay, when I sketch my graph now, I'm going to plot my x uh, intercepts. I got negative 2, 0, and positive 2. Okay, let's look at the multiplicity. So at 0, my degree is 1, so this is going to go through the x-axis. Uh, for x equals 2, my multiplicity is 2, so this is going to bounce off the x-axis. Okay, and at x plus 2, uh, that 0 is x, is x equals negative 2. That's also squared, so that's even. So this is also going to be a bounce because the multiplicity is even. Okay, my end behavior. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph my end behavior. So it should look like this. My end behavior. Okay. We got that because it's a fifth degree uh, polynomial and the leading coefficient is negative one. It's fifth degree because I added up these exponents here. Because if I multiply them all out, I'm going to end up with x to the fifth in front. Okay, we're going to negative two. We're going to bounce. So I'm not going to go through a negative two. I'm going to bounce. So it's going to be like this bounce off. Okay, at zero, I'm going to go through. So I'm going to bounce off a negative two. And now I'm going to go through at zero. And then I'm going to bounce at two. So I'm going to through zero. And then I'm going to bounce at Two. So I bounced at negative 2, I went through at 0, and then I bounced at 2. Okay, And that's what your graph should look like, your sketch. All right, next one. So our x-intercepts, x equals 2, x equals 1, x equals negative 1, and x equals negative 3. Okay, the multiplicity here is 1. So I'm going to go through. 
uh, the x axis at x equals two. I'm going to bounce at x equals one because the multiplicity is even. It's two. Okay. Three. That's odd. So at negative one, I'm going to go through. And then at negative three, it's even. So I'm going to bounce. Okay. End behavior. So as x goes to infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, we want to know what's going to happen to our y. Okay, so we got to do two things. We got to find the degree of the polynomial. So 4 plus 3 is 7, plus 2 is 9, plus 1 is 10. So this is going to be a 10th degree polynomial, which means it's degrees is even. Okay, and our leading coefficient out front is going to be a 1, right? These are all 1s. 1, 1, 1. So I have 1 to the 1st times 1 squared times 1 to the 3rd times 1 to the 4th times the 1 in front. It's all going to be 1. Okay? So that's positive 1. So it's positive and even. So our end behavior is going to look something like this. Okay? So when I graph this, we should be going to pos we should be going up at the end on each side. As we go right, we go up. As we go left, we go up. All right? So if I graph this, I'm going to put my x intercepts on here. Uh, I got negative 3, negative 1, 1 and 2. Okay? Um so I'm going to put my end behavior first. It's going up and up. Okay, I'm going to, let's see, negative threes first. I'm going to bounce at negative three. So I'm going to bounce at negative three like this. At negative one, we're going to go through. So I'm going to go through at negative one like this. Okay, we're going through. At positive one, I'm going to bounce. So I'm going to, it's going to look like this. Bounce. Okay, and then at positive two, we're going to go through. So it's going to look like this. We bounce at negative 3 and 1. We go through at negative 1 and 2. So there's our sketch of our polynomial. All right, 13 and 14 are the same thing, except uh, we have to factor. Okay, They haven't factored for us. So on number 13, um, they both, all three terms have an x squared, so I'm going to factor out x squared. And what I have left is x squared plus 3x, okay, x squared, plus 3x minus 10. Okay, and now I can use the x method to factor this. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 10 and add to 3. That's going to be positive 5 and negative 2. So I have x squared. I have x plus 5 x minus 3. So this means my zeros are going to be x equals 0, x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 3. Okay, at 0, the multiplicity is 2, so we're going to bounce. And then at negative 5 and 3, the multiplicity is just 1, so we're going to go through at those points, through and through. Okay. Uh, end behavior, this is x to the fourth, and it's positive, right? So it's a fourth degree function, and the leading coefficient is positive one. So again, it's going to look like this. So when I go to graph, I plot my, I have zero, I have three, and I have negative five. So my end behavior makes it look like this and this. Okay, at negative 5, we're going to go through. So I'm going to go through at negative 5. At 0, I'm going to bounce. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to bounce at 0. And then I'm going to go through at 3. So it's going to look like such, something like this. Just a sketch. Not a perfect graph, but just a sketch. All right, number 14. Okay, you got a factor. So again, I can pull out x to the third this time. x to the third. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus 8x plus 16. 
I can factor using my X method. I need two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative eight. Okay, that's gonna be negative four and negative four. So I have X to the third, X minus four, X minus four, right? So that's really H of X equals X to the third. And there's X to the minus four twice. So I'm gonna write that as X minus four squared. Okay, so my zeros here are X equals zero and X equals four. Okay, the multiplicity here is three. So this is gonna be through, we're gonna go through at zero. The multiplicity at four is two. So it's even, so we're gonna bounce at four. Okay, and behavior. Um, this is a fifth degree polynomial. Uh, the leaning coefficient is plus one. All right, so this is going to look um, like this. Whoops. All right, it's going to look like this. All right, so as X goes to infinity, Y goes to infinity. As X goes to negative infinity to the left, Y is going to go to negative infinity down. All right. So when I plot this graph, I have zero and four. Oops, that's zero and four. Okay, um, it's going to start by coming up. We're going to go through at zero and then bounce at four. So we're gonna come through at zero and bounce at four. It should look something like this. Okay, something like this. All right. The last section is finding the complex root of polynomials. So we're gonna do that by using the graph. Uh, and we know that the real zeros are the ones where it crosses the x axis. So we know that this polynomial has a real zero at negative two. So let me actually um, scroll up more so I have more room. Okay, but the idea here is the root is going to be negative two, zero. So I have a real root at negative two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide my real root at negative two. I'm going to use synthetic division. So one, two, four, and eight. I'm going to use this division to help me factor. I know that this should be a factor <clears throat> of this polynomial F because <clears throat> because that's where it crosses the X axis. Okay. So I know that negative two, I should get a remainder of zero. And it should factor into this polynomial because it crosses the x-axis at negative two. Okay, pull down my one. Negative two times one is negative two. That's going to give me zero. Negative two times zero is zero, which gives me four. Negative two times four is negative eight, which again gives me that remainder of zero. Okay, um, so x plus two, it was one factor. And then what we have left, is x squared plus 0x plus 4. Okay, so this is what f of x is going to equal. Okay, on this one, we don't have to use the um, quadratic formula because it's just x squared plus 4. So um, I could do x plus 2 equals 0. And I could do x squared plus 4 equals 0. So if I was solving this and I subtract two on both sides, I'm going to get X equals negative two, which is what we had, right? Uh, and then on this one, I would subtract four on both sides and get X squared equals negative four. And then when I take the square root of both sides, I get X equals plus or minus two I. So we get X equals two I and X equals negative two I. Okay. All right, this one over here, um, the zero is 
negative one. Okay, so I'm going to use synthetic division. I know one of my factors is x plus one. That means that negative one minus zero should divide evenly into x to the third plus five x squared plus nine x plus five. And we should get a remainder of zero. So let's see. That's a one, negative one, four, negative four, five, negative five, remainder of zero. Perfect. So I know x plus one times x squared plus four x plus five, right? Um, and that's g of x. Okay, so I have x plus one factored out. I can't factor the rest of this because um, it's going to be complex solutions. So I need to use that quadratic formula. So I remember if our quadratic formula is opposite of b, x equals opposite of b plus or minus plus or minus. If I could write it properly, plus or minus. All right, so opposite of b plus or minus b square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So over here for us, a is going to be 1. b is going to be 4. And c is going to be 5. So opposite of b is going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2 times 1. Okay, so that's going to give me negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4. And if I put all this in my calculator, 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5, it's going to be 16 minus 20, which is negative 4. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, so the square root of negative 4 is 2i. Okay, um, we need to divide both terms by 2, right? So both of these terms need to get divided by 2. Right, which means x is going to equal negative 2 plus or minus i. So my zeros here were x equals negative 1. And then my other, my two complex roots are going to be x equals negative 2 plus i. And then x equals negative 2 minus i. Okay, those are my complex roots. All right, we got two more. So again, that's why it only crosses the x-axis once. Right, it only crosses the x-axis at one negative one. It crosses the complex, the x-axis in the complex plane at negative two plus i, negative two minus i, but it doesn't cross the x-axis in the real plane, in the Cartesian plane. Okay, two more. We're doing the same thing here. So again, on this one, um, our x-intercept is two. All right, so I'm going to use two. Okay, remember there should be a 0x squared here. So when I use synthetic division, I need to do 1, 0, negative 2, negative 4. Okay, so this is 1, 2, 2, 4, 2, 4, remainder of 0, right? And there should be a remainder of 0 because we know that x minus 2 is a factor. We know that 2 is a 0. Okay, so um, we have x minus 2. And then we have x squared plus 2x plus 2. So that is h of x. Okay, so uh, we can't factor this. So we need to use our quadratic formula. So a is going to be 1. b is going to be 2. And c is going to be 2 as well. So we're going to have opposite of b is negative 2 plus or minus b squared. That's 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2a. So 2 times 1. 
So we got x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root. That's going to be 4 minus 8, which again is negative 4 over 2. And we just talked about the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of negative 4 is 2i. So I'm going to have negative 2 plus or minus 2i. We got to divide both terms by 2. Right? You got to divide both of the terms by 2. So you get negative 1 plus or minus i. So our solutions here are going to be x equals 2. That's the real solution. And your two complex solutions are going to be negative 1 plus i and negative 1 minus i. That's supposed to be an i. Plus i minus i. Okay, last one. Um, what is our x-intercept? Our x-intercept is positive 1. So 1, 0. Um, so we're going to do 1, right? So our factor is x minus 1. So it's going to be 1, 1, 15, negative 17. So a little closer together here so we have more room. Okay, so 1 times 1 is 1. That's a 2. 2, 17, 17. Remainder is 0. Again, it should be a 0 because we know x minus 1 is a factor. So we have k of x equals x minus 1 times x squared plus 2x plus 17. Okay, we can't factor this, so we need to use our quadratic formula. So we're going to say a is 1, b is 2, c is 17. Okay, so it's going to be negative x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root of 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 17. Okay, you can put everything under the radical in your calculator. Um, 4 times 15 is 60. 4 times 2 is 8. That should be 68, negative 68. So 4 minus negative 68 is going to be negative 64 over 2. The square root of 64 is 8. So the square root of negative 64 is going to be 8i. Okay, and we got to divide both terms by 2. So we get negative 1 plus or minus 4i. So our solutions here are going to be x equals 1. That's a 0. The other roots are going to be x equals negative 1 plus 4i. And then x equals negative 1 minus 4i. And those are your roots, and that's the uh, end of the review.